the ultimate soccer show. Join me, listen, you'll love it. Everybody does. And welcome back in. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great day. Now you can chill and watch some football and enjoy the rest of the show. Tell you what we're going to touch. And again, it is definitely a fast moving show. We're going to start off with the EPL, the top 10. Then we're going to talk the relegation focus because them games are coming up real soon. Then I'm going to give you my EPL predictions, the whole weekend's predictions. Then we're going to talk the center spot with FA Cup action, fourth round, fifth round. We've got some highlight action for you too. You're going to love it. Lots of goals. Great action, and it really epitomizes what the FA Cup, the Football Association Cup, is all about. Remember, the FA Cup, the Football Association Cup, is the oldest knockout soccer competition, probably in the universe, but definitely on this planet. Then we'll talk about the EFL Championship and what's happening. And remember, it's it's definitely Burnley and Sheffield to get promoted straight away. And it could be a few other teams lining themselves up. Norwich maybe Watford will keep you informed as we get through closer to the end of the show. Then we'll touch the fun facts, talking Canadian soccer, a Canadian soccer star, Tio Corbano, Wolverhampton Wanderers, got news on Tio, keep it here, we'll tell you about Tio Corbano, great, great prospect for the future of Canadian soccer, I love what this guy is about, and we'll talk about some of the world gossip breaking through and trade news as well, and if you're wondering what I'm wearing today, it is in fact a Manchester City shirt. Manchester City shirt from 2008-2009. And it's the nice blue they had back then, not the same as now. And Le Coq Sportif, the Coq Sports, Le Coq Sportif, a French manufacturer. And yeah, Man City shirt from 2008-2009. Reason why I'm wearing this one, just to let you know, it took Man City quite a few years to get ready to win a title. Manchester City resemble or Newcastle United resemble Manchester City of 2008-2009, coming into lots of big money, signing players of quality, slowly building their team to challenge, and they're sitting third in the league right now. I anticipate, should it continue for Newcastle, that within three years, they definitely will be title contenders if they haven't already won one of those titles in the next three years. I really think Newcastle is the biggest story burning all they need is silverware and consistency moving forward. But yeah, Man City 2009-2008, and it took Man City three years to win their first title since the 60s, 1960s, not 1860s. And it took them three years to win their title. And I'm saying the same is happening to Newcastle United. So let's get into the Premiership Top 10. Let's get into some of the news. Okay, guys. There's the schedule for this weekend's Premier League games. There's a few beauties in there. We'll be talking about some of them pretty soon. But talking predictions, there's my predictions for this weekend. Let's see some of yours. Comment down below. Let's have some sharing and comparing. Come on, guys. I mean, let's not be strangers anymore. Start to write downstairs if you haven't already. Start getting into the flow of things. We're talking EPL. We're talking FA Cup. We're talking Canadian. And we'll talk anything that you want to. But... There's the predictions for this weekend. Let's start chewing on some of the games I want to touch on. First game I want to touch on is Everton taking on the Arsenal at Goodison this weekend. New coach, Sean Dyke, defensive coach. We know he's a defensive coach. He's not going to fill Everton with goals galore. If they do survive, it's going to be by the odd goal winning games and drawing games. Expect a few losses. They will not. They will not change the fortune of this club. And if they do survive, it will be because of Sean Dyke and Sean Dyke alone in his hard man, hard line tactics. He's a real old style coach. He's more of the old professional, old style, English style coach, which not necessarily wins trophies, but he's kept Burnley a big club for 10 years when he was there. And eventually, I believe they stopped listening to him because last year when they went down, it was Sean Dyke's team that went down. Now, Sean Dyke, a team coach with Everton again, but on his record, recent relegation. Will it be two relegations in two years? It's interesting to know. And I'll tell you what, on Everton, they took a long time to hire Sean Dyke. And Bielsa said, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. Bielsa was never going to get into that slot. So don't blame Bielsa. Don't blame anybody else. And you can say Wayne Rooney was never going to take this job, not in a million years. So Sean Dyke, front and centre, 
right from the beginning. He was definitely the guy that was going to take this job. And, you know, you've got to say he's right for Everton. He's right for the time. And if they do go down, then you've got to say it's not that bad. It's not that bad a deal because you've got to say it is what it is. And they are what they are. And they were never going to bring up a massive coach. They were never going to get Bielsa. It was never going to happen. It's too late in the season. And quite frankly, Everton is not attractive enough as a club at this stage of the season to bring anybody else in. So looking at the weekend, you, you've got to say Arsenal's looking for another three points. If Everton do by some, some fluke or some stroke of luck, get the win because the new coach is coming in and they're really trying for him, then that'll go a long way to a stepping stone to pushing Everton in the right direction. But ask yourself, can you really see Arsenal losing at Everton? I think Arsenal's at least good for a tie, don't you? Now, moving on. Man United, Crystal Palace. There's something I'm going to say here that's probably not going to be too, uh, too popular with some, but it's broadcasting and it's journalism at its finest art. Man United taking on Crystal Palace straight away, I've got to say, looking on it, 3-1 United. Definitely a win for United. And with Crystal Palace, just something of a note, but Patrick Vieira, the coach. Crystal Palace, Patrick Vieira, the coach. Fantastic player with the Arsenal for many, many years. Fantastic French international. And so far, he's doing a pretty decent job with Crystal Palace. But something that's catching my eye is I think that Patrick Vieira may well be making history pretty soon because over the last couple of weeks, more than that, but since the season started, Crystal Palace have fielded more black players than white players. Now, the way this is going to make history is the day they field an all-black team. It could possibly happen. It really could possibly happen. And the point is the matter is this. In the last three games especially, Crystal Palace have fielded nine black players, one white player. One day, Palace is going to field an all-black team. Watch it happen. I'm telling you it's coming, and I'm telling you before it happens. Patrick Vieira, Crystal Palace, nine players, nine black players on the team last time around. He will be making history. i got to tell you, I see it coming, Palace with an all-black team. And let's face it, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Next up, Forrest and Leeds United. Stevie Cooper doing a great job and uh, Jesse March also doing a good job. This one's a little bit of a kicker for the relegation zone. Leeds on the road at Forrest. It could be a tough, tough day for Leeds, but somehow something tells me both teams can get something out of this. But if Forrest get the win, there are only five games, five more wins away from safety. Is Stevie Cooper and the team going to get a win? Or does Leeds United spoil the day? And does Jesse March and the fellas go back to Leeds with all three points? Like I say, very even. Keep your eye on that one. Wolverhampton Wanderers taking on Liverpool. Wolves, Lopetit, the coach. You know Lopetit? Great coach. A lot of experience. If anybody's going to save Wolverhampton Wanderers, it's him. There are signs that it's already happening. And this weekend, Liverpool coming in. They've just been jettisoned out of the FA Cup at Brighton. And things are not good for Jurgen Klopp and the team. And Liverpool, I tell you, they are not the team they were. It's a sign of the times. But this one, you've got to say, Wolverhampton Wanderers, they need a win. They need some points. Is it another loss for Liverpool? Is Liverpool going to cough up three more points? Is Alisson going to have a horrendous time in goal? All the big players for Liverpool don't seem to be turning it on. They better turn it on question is, will they turn it on this weekend? And will Jurgen Klopp have a smile? Or will it be Wolves and Le Petit smiling all the way to the bank with three valuable points in their efforts to get out of relegation zone? I'm telling you, I see Wolves moving away from relegation. I don't think they're the guys to fill the bottom three places. The guys in the bottom three, Everton, Bournemouth and Southampton, for my money, are the guys who are going to go down. Maybe Sean Dyke can perform a miracle because it would be an absolute miracle. And then finally, finally, last game of the, of the weekend, Tottenham taking on Manchester City at the Tottenham Stadium in London. Man City travelling again. Doesn't matter where Manchester City play, home or away, they can take the three points on any day. What's for, Man what's for Manchester City now to move in the second phase of this season and start picking up momentum? Once you make a bad, 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 champion angry 
well, they're going to come back and win it again, yeah? They are really badass angry right now at the rest of the world, and they want to show and prove a point, especially like they did last weekend with the 1-0 win over Arsenal in the FA Cup against Arteta. Maybe someone needs to restrain Arteta, put a set of reins on him and keep him off the sideline. How many more players does he need to abuse? How many referees does he need to abuse? How many people does he need to abuse? The man just keeps abusing people. He needs roping in. He needs leashing to that technical area because he's anywhere but the technical area. I'd like to see the referees coming down on him because you know what? At the end of the day, he does nothing but upset, really upset a lot of people. Let's take a look at the relegation zone. This is getting really interesting or really sad for three teams. Let's go to the relegation zone right now. Now, talking about relegation, it's pretty simple. The teams that you can see in the frame are all in the frame for a reason. Their form is terrible, and even good teams of the past, like Leicester City, who won the, the title a couple of years ago, they're not doing too good. Wins are hard to come by. Draws are hard to come by, and losses are plentiful. Now, talking at the bottom, Southampton, recently they've bring in some decent form, but can it continue? And you've got to ask yourself, they've not been consistent all season. When a coach comes in, things change slightly and then they flatline again. I'm looking for Southampton to flatline again. A lot of young players on that team and the experienced players that are on that team are really not getting it done. Everton, Sean Dyke. Let's face it. He's a defensive coach, like I told you. If they are to survive, it's going to be a couple of things. First of all, Sean Dyke is a big defensive coach. He likes team defense all the time and they don't waste time going forward. They're a team now moving forward, Everton, that may have a few players that can unlock the door once in a blue moon because it's not often enough. The creativity is not enough is what I'm saying. But moving forward, look for Everton to be more deliberate, like the old style Sam Allardyce kind of team where they put the bus in front of everybody and they literally score goals off set pieces. Set pieces are free kicks in and around the box and corner kicks. Look for Everton to become a set piece team and not to squander energy or time moving forward because it's not going to happen. As for the relegation factor, if they do survive, it's, it's it's borderline miracle. It's not impossible, but it's very doubtful. And like I say, the guys in the bottom that are in the bottom are in the bottom for a reason. The, the form is horrendous and the players are not as good as what you think. When you consider Everton have spent £730 million since Mashiri's been in charge. That's only a couple of years, and they've wasted that money. They've gone nowhere but into the bottom three. And if it carries on, yeah, relegation is the reality. So can Sean Dyke save them? I don't know that he can. I think this guy is lined up for the future and a battle from the championship back up because, let's face it, Sean Dyke knows the championship very well, has brought teams up too. He knows the Premier League very well. But he needs quality to stay in there. And the bottom line is, Everton do not have enough quality. Therefore, I don't think they're hanging around too long. It's going to be interesting, but week to week, look for Everton to start picking up points. Because if it carries on like it is right now, they're going nowhere. Bournemouth, I can't see them surviving. I'm not going to waste any time. I don't think there's enough talent on the team. And I think that they're playing at their level. This is the ceiling. Bournemouth is going down. Wolverhampton, I told you. Le Petit. He's going to get them up and they are going to go higher and they'll finish close to mid table, but top 10 hmm, might be just a push too far. West Ham slowly getting into form. Great little win in the FA Cup. That's going to get some confidence going. But in the next round of the FA Cup, it's Man United away. Bit of a tough call there. West Ham United should be surviving though, let's face it. And if they sell Declan Rice, that's just like Everton selling Gordon. It's like you're selling your best players. Anthony Gordon goes to Newcastle. Doesn't help Everton, helps Newcastle. So Declan Rice, West Ham. West Ham need to keep him. They need to keep David Moyes as well. I don't say fire him, keep him as well and set up again for next season. This year is a reset season off the back of a European season. And always, always when an average team, and West Ham is an average team, when an average team goes into European competition, every time they do, the knock-on season, it hurts their league form. I've seen it so many times. So sometimes you've got to ask yourself, as a mid-table team, is it worth your while getting into European football if it ruins the next season and threatens relegation like it is with Everton at the moment? 
Leeds United, Jesse March, still marching through, still going strong. I think they've got an outside edge to survive. Let's see what happens. Brendan Rodgers up at Leicester City. I'm still shaking my head at Rodgers and this team. I think that you have to say at the end of the day, maybe Lazy Bastards Club, because they really are not working like they should be or like they normally would be. And it makes me wonder whether they have stopped listening or respecting Brendan Rodgers and his tactics and his staff. Because Leicester seems to be switching off. Finally, Nottingham Forest, Stevie Cooper. I can't speak highly enough about Stevie Cooper and the Nottingham Club. The players they brought in are doing it. They slowly melded this thing together. And really, you can see the fruits of everything coming together. A win on the weekend sets up five wins for the rest of the season and Premier League survival. I say Nottingham is going to survive. Talking FA Cup on centre spot. Great round of FA Cup soccer this weekend. Take a look at the FA Cup fourth round scores. And the last one down below the red line. That was the prediction from the final game. I was looking for a 3-1 win at Derby by West Ham. West Ham won 2-0. Take a look at the scores. And behind me, you can see some action that you're going to see in a couple of seconds from Wrexham and Sheffield United. Absolute barn-burning game. Absolute amazing game. And I'll tell you what, take a look at the fifth round because I'll tell you what, there's some fantastic games coming up in the fifth round. Fifth round is set for March the 1st. Take a look at some of these because I'll tell you, you're going to love them. FA Cup is absolutely where it's at. The oldest knockout competition in the world. It's absolutely huge. Now, looking at the championship, Burnley in first, Sheffield United in second. You've got to say, can Sheffield United catch Burnley? Paul Heckingbottom, the coach, has done a fantastic job. Really like the guy. He's a class act. But can he push Sheffield into first? That's the question. Does Sheffield get a win on this year's title ship? Or does it stay with Burnley in first? Burnley right now five points clear of Sheffield. And Vincent Company, you've got to say, he must have learned a bag load from Pep Guardiola at Man City all the years he played there. But does Burnley finish first or does Sheffield slide in? Because like I say, it's only five points. That's only two games. Anything's possible. 18 games to go? Hmm. I think it's Burnley's, but it could be Sheffield that Pip Burnley to the title. You've got to say, it's not that much of a stretch. Now, let's take a look at the games coming on this weekend. And the EFL Championship games coming through English Football League, EFL, English Football League Championship games coming through. You can see all the games there. 
One or two of the games that I'm really interested in. Firstly, Rotherham welcome in Sheffield United. That's going to be a tough game for Sheffield United. But you've got to think, it's been a tough season all the way through. And Sheffield really coming through it with shining, flying colours. Especially when you looked at that game we just saw with Wrexham on the road, 3-3 on the road. That wasn't an easy place to go. Wrexham, Rotherham is not an easy place to go either. So I'd be saying look for Sheffield United to have a tough game on the road. Another tough game on the road is top team Burnley. Burnley are going to go to Norwich City. Norwich City, another team looking to keep that good form going. Burnley looking to keep it going. It's been going all season. This one has draw written all over it. It wouldn't be a shock if Norwich got a win. But I'm looking for Burnley and Vincent Company to keep this going. And you have to imagine... How much do you think Vincent Company learned from Pep Guardiola as a Manchester City player? Because this is Vincent Company's first job as a coach, and he's lighting it up as if he's been coaching for 20 years. Absolutely amazing performance by Vincent Company and by Burnley. I'm looking for those guys to get up this year. Blackburn Rovers in indifferent form. They look like they could be getting a win this weekend. Or maybe a loss, because they don't draw too many, do they? One loss on the season, that was recently. This weekend, Blackburn Rovers welcome in Wigan Athletic. Take a look at the rest of the games, guys. But I tell you what, I don't see too much changing in the next couple of games. And look out for Norwich and Watford to try and solidify a playoff spot. In behind, title champions, who I say Burnley, and runners-up, Sheffield United. Now, on the fun facts, it's Canadian news, and I love talking Canadian news. It's about a Canadian player, a young player, another young player, another Canadian kid in Europe. I've been watching this kid for quite some time. Theo Corbineau. Theo Corbineau. Great player. I love everything about him. And you've got to say, at Wolverhampton Wanderers, look at that beautiful outfit. And he, doesn't he look good in that orange of, or, the, or, or the gold of Wolves? Doesn't he look good in that gold, yeah? I'll tell you what. One game so far he's played for Wolverhampton Wanderers in the time he's been there. He was loaned out last season to Blackpool, played about 17 games, scored three goals, did very well. And ever since then, he's been looking to get onto another club. I can't understand why Blackpool wouldn't want to hire him again because he's still only 20. Now, from a premiership team, and remember, he was on loan at Blackpool. He's now on loan again. And eventually, I think that Theo needs to nail down a club, nail down a contract, and above all, nail down a starting place so he can get his name out there. There's no point going from club to club for loan deal, loan deal, loan deal forever, because some guys do. And he's with a Premier League club with Wolverhampton Wanderers. So he needs to get on a Premier League team or a big team and make his future. Now, right now, he's been loaned out again, and he's gone to Germany, Deutschland. And he's gone to a team that I used to play against once in a while, Armenia Bielefeld in the second division in Germany. Bundesliga, Zweite Bundesliga in Deutschland. Armenia Bielefeld. That's where he is. He's now a second division player with Armenia Bielefeld. You could say he was a third division player with Blackpool, per se. And then, as they got into championship, a second division player. So he stayed at that same, same level. Is Theo Corbino a second division player? second level or is he going to get to the top flight who knows but what i'm saying is he stands upright he's got decent speed he's got great feet he's decent in the air he plays on the wide side i like everything i've seen about him all he needs to do is to get to a team and nail down a spot i hope he has a great season at Armenia bielefeld but for my money i think he's going to be a little hidden in Armenia Bielefeld because it's not exactly the biggest team in the world. They don't exactly have the biggest press corps. They don't exactly have the biggest crowds and they don't exactly have the biggest name. So for me, I would not have wanted to send him to Bielefeld as an agent, but I guess the club are looking for him to get some playing time and that's what it's all about. So there you know, Theo Corbino, Wolverhampton Wanderers player, being loaned out again He's gone to Armenia Bielefeld in Germany. I'm looking for things to happen. Let's make your name, Theo. Let's get a contract. Let's get on a big team. There's some Canadian news for you. And guys, news from the EPL. Anthony Gordon has signed for Newcastle United for 40 million with add-ons. It'll go to 45 million too. It's a big day for Newcastle. It's a big day for Anthony Gordon. 
It's a big day for Eddie Howe, the coach at Newcastle. Down below is a video on Anthony Gordon going to Newcastle. Get all the news there. But it's a big day for Newcastle. It's a bad day for Everton. In a way, it gets a little better for Everton when you sign Sean Dyke. But is he going to be the guy to save Everton? Do you really think he's going to save them? Remember, I told you, he's a defensive coach. The offense is set pieces, corners, free kicks, hardly any flowing moves. And when you do get a flowing move on one of his teams and they score, you'll be quite shocked. Shocking is this, the job that Eric Ten Hag is doing at Manchester United. Could you have thought that he would turn this club around? Let's face it, they've had four coaches going through. It started with David Moyes. Then it was Van Horrible, Van Hal. Then it was Jose Mourinho. And then it was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. None of them have done, could do what Eric Ten Hag is doing. Now, as you can see in the picture, Eric Ten Hag is walking around with his wife. The wife is called Bianca. Bianca and Eric Ten Hag are looking for a house in Cheshire or the Chester area where loads of footballers live because it's an absolutely picturesque, scenic, wonderfully beautiful part of England. And there's no big cities around you for the hustle and the bustle. Okay, guys, that's all we've got time for today. Keep it here. Keep it square. We'll be back before the weekend. And we'll set up the weekend for you as well. And all the games that are coming through, don't forget, you've got your League Cup coming through. Could it be a Newcastle Man United final? Possibly could. Keep it here, guys. I'll keep you informed. Have a great day. Cheers. Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve.